Greetings. This is Jerry Revere with the Avaya Serviceability Engineering Team. This video today will show the various steps to provision a Release 6.2 Communication Manager Duplex Server Pair and bring this pair of servers into service. The video you are viewing will demonstrate the provisioning of the Communication Manager Duplex Server Pair, which happens to be running in a pair of VMware hypervisors. Please note that there is nothing in this video that indicates that, nor will make a difference in the provisioning work I will be performing. I will be showing the setting of the system ID and the module ID, the LAN identities of each server and the duplication link setup. The final view will show the status summary screen with the active and standby server pairs online. I have selected one of the two servers in the server pair and have logged into its SMI. Selecting the link Server Role, leaving the radio button set at Main Server, I am entering the system ID and leaving the module ID set at 1. Pressing the Change button, the SMI requests the system to be restarted to make the changes active. I have restarted the system. Now that the restart has completed and I have waited to all the system processes to restart, I have selected the network configuration link to define the various parameters which are the server host name, DNS servers, DNS domain and domain search orders. Notice that the IP entries from the initial install are displayed. I have entered the alias IP address which is only available when the server in the pair is the active server. The final things to be entered are the IP address information of the near side of the duplex link. I am entering the address of 192.11.13.13 with a subnet mask of slash 30. Selecting the change button, the SMI requests the system to be restarted. I have selected the restart later button and the interfaces to configure it are brought down and restarted and only CM has not been restarted. Next, selecting the Duplication Parameters link, I will define in this server the IP addressing of the other server in the pair. Accepting the default server duplication method, I will enter the server ID of 2, the corporate LAN IP address, and the far end address of the duplication link. The final entry on this page is the IP address of the PE Health Check, which is usually defined by entering the default gateway of the network segment. Pressing the change button brings up the request to restart CM. After all processes are up and in the standby mode, I will then switch over to the other server. I have skipped showing logging in to the SMI of the second server in the pair. I have selected the link to define the server role. The information entered here is exactly the same information as we saw entered into the first server in the pair. I have selected the change button and restarted communication manager to make those values active. After the new values have been assigned and all processes are up except for the dupe manager as it is not completely configured yet, we can move on to configuring the addressing of the second server. Selecting a network configuration link, we will set similar IP network parameters as we did in this screen of the first server. The difference will be the host name, a unique server ID of 2, a unique IP address, and the near IP address of 192.11.13.14 of the duplication link. After entering our data and pressing the change button, we will restart the system to make the interfaces active. When the interfaces have become active again, I will select the duplication parameters link.
Opening up the duplication parameters dialog, I am entering the first server's ID of 1 and that server's corporate LAN IP address. Finally, the remote end IP address of the duplication link, which is 192.11.13.13. The last entry will be setting the PE health check address of the default gateway on the network, as was performed on the first server. Pressing the change button and the restart now button on the pop-up will restart all CM processes. After watching the server processes restart and finally complete on the second server, I have selected the status summary link on the first server. Please note that both servers are in a busy out state. The next steps are to release them into service. Selecting the busy out slash release server link, I have pushed the release button. After a short time, I have received a success message that this server is released into service. Switching over to the other server and selecting the busy out slash release server link, I have pushed the release button once again. After a short time, I have received a similar success message that the server is released into service. Please note that we now have an active and standby server pair up and working. CM is now ready to be licensed and provisioned. Thank you for your time today. We welcome comments, questions, and feedback at mentor at avaya.com or on Twitter at Avaya Mentor. For more details or related information, please visit support.avaya.com. Thank you for choosing Avaya.